In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we hear so many times on Sunday mornings through our gospel lessons, Jesus uses clear and explicit language to get us to understand his message. And this morning's gospel reading is no exception. It's a very famous gospel lesson, a gospel reading that we've all heard numerous times. And Jesus begins this story by saying two men went up to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. And so he presents us immediately with two examples two men holding powerful positions of their day. One a respected Pharisee, a clergyman, a holy man of the Jewish synagogue, and the other a tax collector who was notoriously a cheat, who was hated by most all people because tax collectors in that day were men who were despised by the citizens of those towns because it was usually the tax collector who collaborated with the enemy, the government of Rome. And the tax collector worked on commission, meaning the more he could gouge out of his clients, the more he could pocket for himself. Yet strangely, when we hear Jesus tell this story, it is not the Pharisee, but rather the tax collector who comes off like the hero. And as we heard, it begins with the Pharisee praying his infamous prayer by using the following words. God, I thank thee that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this guy over there, this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give tithes of all that I earn. Perhaps on the surface, our first response after initially hearing this prayer may be that this is really not a bad prayer. After all, this Pharisee is telling God exactly all of the good things that he's doing. After all, the Pharisee wasn't like some of the riffraff of society. So some of us could pray the Pharisee prayer with some justification. But also in this gospel reading this morning, we hear the prayer of the tax collector. And our gospel reading tells us, standing far off in a corner, this man would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but simply beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O Theos, elastiti mito amartolo. A simple, simple prayer. And what do we call that prayer? We call that the Jesus prayer. You see so many people with the rope around their wrist, with the little knots in it, and that is a Jesus rope. And they should be saying the Jesus prayer, a simple but very concise prayer. God be merciful to me, a sinner. Nothing more to be said. God knows our good points. God knows our bad points. So we didn't need to hear the Pharisee say, I'm not like adulterers. I'm not like cheats. I'm not like all of the rest of the people of society. I give tithings to the synagogue. God didn't need to hear all that stuff. And so the tax collector says the simple prayer, God be merciful to me, a sinner. He undresses himself and may puts himself naked before God. 
And he says, God, forgive me, for I am a sinner. And through this, we see no illusions, no pretense, no arrogance, no conditions. We simply see a man placing his heart and soul before the feet of God and asking for forgiveness. The tax collector knows what he is and what he has done. And he is so ashamed that he cannot even look up to heaven as he pours out his confession to God. And his prayer is simple, yet so honest. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. As we have said again and again, Jesus hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. And I think we all know what that means. He loves us in spite of our sins. Jesus loves the sinner first of all because they know they still have room to grow. But in our passage this morning, Jesus knew that he was talking to an audience that thought they had achieved everything. They thought the word perfection was a description of themselves. They thought of themselves as the spiritually elite. If there is anything that most people dislike, it is a person, someone else who comes off as smug, sneering, and self-important. There's no hope for people who think they've already arrived, who think that they already know everything. Their thought is, why should I we bother to attend church on Sunday morning if we think we already know everything and everything we need to know about Christ and our Orthodox faith? That's what this gospel reading is talking about today. But the real truth is, we don't. We do not totally understand our faith. We don't understand the practices. We don't know anything about the praxis of the church. And that is why Jesus enters our midst. Jesus came into the world in order to introduce people to a new reality. And so Jesus indeed loves the sinner, as I said, because they know they still have room to grow. Jesus loves sinners in the second place because they do not look down at others. Some trusted in themselves and believed themselves to be righteous. And therefore, they thought they had the right to despise others because they were less important. And that's often what happens, doesn't it? As someone once put it, the trouble oftentimes with religious people is that they try to be more spiritual than God himself. And when that happens, we begin to look down on others. Because we think we know our faith, we become condescending and we look at other people as less than perfect. And we think we have the right to do that. But as soon as the tax collector saw his faults, he knew that change was necessary. And thirdly, Jesus loves the sinner because they know that they must depend on God. These self-righteous people that Jesus was addressing in verse 9 of this morning's gospel reading, did not trust God. Rather, they trusted only themselves and only in their good works. And sadly, that describes, yes, some of us as well. We think we know everything about our church. We think we know how a church should be run. I'm sure we know of some who imitate that very Pharisee who could not see that his self-righteousness was like filthy rags in the presence of God. The love of God is given freely, but when we pharisaically extend our hand out to accept it, 
without any of the humility of the tax collector, without any of the humility of the repentant sinner, without any humility of man coming to his creator for cleansing, then our prayers go unanswered because they're not prayers, just as the Pharisee in this morning's gospel reading. Those who know themselves to be sinners must also know that they must depend on God. And I hope that includes us. Finally, my dear friends, this brings us to the last thing that I believe that needs to be said. Jesus loves sinners primarily because there is no one else to love. And what do I mean by that? Well, there is, is there anyone among us this morning who can stand up and proudly proclaim that he or she is not a sinner? Does anyone in this church this morning have the confidence like that Pharisee in this morning's gospel lesson that we heard about, stand up and brag before God about his or her righteousness? I don't think so. And I'm sure you'll agree, we are all sinners. But that's okay. Because the good news is that we have Jesus Christ who died and resurrected for those sins and offers us salvation and eternal life. And that is why Jesus looked upon the tax collector as the man who was deserving of righteousness and not the Pharisee, a hypocritical man and leader of the synagogue. But Jesus also warns us in this gospel that we cannot keep falling into temptation by comforting ourselves, by telling ourselves that we are not filthy with the crimes of thievery or adultery or murder, and at the same time play the age-old game of selective practice of our orthodox faith. We pick and choose, don't we, what we want to believe in. We pick and choose what kind of an Orthodox Christian we want to be. We tend to sugarcoat our own lifestyles to ignore the more subtle sins and filth of pride and prejudice and neglect of the poor. Our Holy Orthodox Church begins a very important part of our church year. It's called the Triodion period our pre-Lenten period before we actually go into Great Lent. And it begins this morning with Jesus' message of the Gospel reading that tells us that none of us are righteous. And yet even as we are told that this morning, we can take comfort in the fact that Jesus still loves us, even though we are sinners. But we have to respond, not like the hypocritical Pharisee that we heard about, but rather like the tax collector, the real hero in this morning's gospel reading. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we heard this morning the story about the Pharisee and the tax collector who went up into the temple to pray. One was considered a thief and a traitor, while the other was viewed as a leader considered as one of the best people in town. But God didn't see it that way. In the eyes of God, he saw both as sinners. The Pharisee in his own mind thought he had already arrived. He felt content and no further change or growth was necessary, or so he thought. Unfortunately, what he neglected to acknowledge and understand was that good works without faith and beliefs is incomplete. We are given the story of two men, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Both were sinners, but only one of them, the tax collector, was aware of it and asked God to forgive and to change him. So just as, in the case, just as in the case of the tax collector, fortunately for us, Jesus loves the sinner. How do we know that? 
because we are told that it was for sinners that he died. So beginning with today, our Holy Orthodox Church enters into a time for the next several weeks, which I said we refer to as the Triodion period, this gearing up for Great Lent. And it asks us to begin to turn our attention to preparation, to reflection, to change, so that we might be prepared as we finally do enter the great and holy Lenten season. This is a time when our church asks us to perform a catharsis, a catharsis of ourselves, the cleansing of our total being, our personality, our soul, our body, our attitude, our relationships, and our commitments. Jesus Christ this morning speaks to us about tapinosis, about humility, the theme of today's story of the Pharisee and the tax collector. So our church asks us today, are you the tax collector or are you the Pharisee? And whatever your answer is at this moment in your life, the church wants us to identify it so on this day we may begin to set the wheels of change as we march into Great Lent in just a few short weeks and put those wheels of change into action as we enter the Triodion and the Great Lenten season. And may we all enter it with the humility, not of the Pharisee, but rather of the tax collector. Amen.